Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. And if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and verse 2. We're going to pick up with this series I started whenever I started. <laughs> We're going to talk about faith and grace in the midst of discomfort. We have all, we all agree that there is a purpose in discomfort. It is something that no one who's alive on the planet can avoid. Discomfort is something that is used to help mature us, to help grow us up. And there's one thing you've got to please understand, you cannot grow in the comfort zone. You're not going to grow being comfortable all the time, running away from trials and tribulations. The Bible says, they that live godly shall suffer persecution. So it's not this thing of something's wrong with you if tribulation and trouble and discomfort shows up in your life. God is trying to mature you. The objective is to get to the point where you can grow in the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a journey. You should not punish yourself because you had things happen on the journey or you fell on the journey or things were not working on the journey. It is a journey. And on this journey, there will be some uncomfortable situations that you will have to face. This is a part of our spiritual maturity and we must grow. This thing about, well, I'm a Christian and I got saved so I won't ever have to be in discomfort, that, that somebody made that up. You have to grow, and you grow in the middle of pressure. You grow in the middle of confrontation. All of the things that you experience in life, if you don't run away from them, if you stand in them and know how to do it properly, each time you will grow in some months or years ago by, and you look back and say, wow, had I not experienced that, I wouldn't know this. And so, you know, the question is not uh, if discomfort is supposed to be a part of a Christian's life. The question we want to deal with today is, you know, how do we go through it? How do we go through it? Notice you're not going to build a house in discomfort, but how do I go through it? And the way we go through it is through, through this grace that's been made available to us, and the way we go through it is by living this life of faith. And uh, now we get to ch a chance to see in context how faith and grace works to bring you or to help you in the middle of discomfort. Now let me start with this. The scripture says in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, he talks about the apostle Paul saying that he wants to know him, know Jesus in the fellowship of his suffering. Very interesting way to say that. I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. Now, some people have thought, well, that means I want to suffer like Christ suffered. And that's not quite what it means. Because the stuff that Christ suffered, some of you wouldn't survive for a minute. They hit you with a cat of nine tails. You're like, okay, okay, I'll do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> you know. So he's definitely not talking about you suffering the same way Jesus suffered. The key for, word here in this phrase, fellowship of suffering, is the word fellowship. It comes from an old Greek word, kononia, which is a giving and taking, a giving and receiving relationship. If you go uh, to drink coffee with somebody, you say you want to fellowship with them, you know, uh, the, that, that person has a part, you have a part, you know. They're going to share some things with you, you're going to listen, you're going to share some things with them, and everybody operates in their part to accomplish fellowship. Okay, so let's look at Jesus' part in this fellowship of suffering. His part was to uh, be beat with a cat of nine tails, to be the sin offering, to be nailed to the cross, to pay the ransom, to go to a hell that we should have gone through, to suffer uh, sin that he took from us on him. So his part of the fellowship of suffering 
is to obtain the victory. So he died and suffered to get the victory. His suffering got us redemption and righteousness and healing and all of the finished works. That was his job. So he got it. So a lot of stuff we're praying for, it's already done. A lot of stuff that you're asking God for, it's already done. You, oh, God, give me victory. Victory has already been gotten. Okay? So that was Jesus' part. Now, my part in this fellowship of suffering, your part in this fellowship of suffering, is to maintain what Jesus obtained. So everything he got, see, we got to change our thinking. We're, 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 we're trying to get God to do something now as if he hadn't done it. It would be no different is if I were to say to you, sit down, and you're already seated. How frustrated is that? Sit down, and you're already seated. And, 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 and you're going, God, heal me. And he says, I already did that. God, I already did. So we got to change our thinking to line up with the reality of how things are. It's finished. That's the last word he said on the cross. It's finished. I'm done. It's finished. So whatever you're going to be praying for or asking for or pleading for, it's done. Imagine in heaven as they hear you plead and beg and ask like it's not already done. It, it kind of indicates your unbelief. So we, as Christians, we've got to operate with this thing has presently been accomplished. Now, my job is to maintain the victory that was obtained, which means I have a job of standing there for. How long do I have to stand there until I get what I'm standing for? I'm standing there for. So I believe that Jesus has already given me the victory where deliverance is concerned, all right? So you say, I'm going to stand on that, all right? So now here comes the discomfort. Here comes the trouble to try to knock you off your stance. And now, am I just to stand there and get beat up? Am I just to stand there and just get whopped in the head? No, the Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil. That word resist means to withstand and to fight against. And then if you'll do that, he will run with fear. He will flee. So you find something else in the Scripture. Oh, I believe that I'm going to stand on that. And then all hell breaking loose to try to get you to change your mind. Jesus didn't do nothing for you. Didn't nothing happen on that cross. And you're sitting there like, nope, I'm standing. Oh, nope, I'm standing. And then, now, so, so how, how do I stand? Okay, the attack comes. You remember when Taffy had that little red shield and she threw things at it? We're standing with the shield of faith. And what happens is, you know, you say, I'm delivered. And he says, no, you're not. And you hold your shield up. <laughs> yes, I am. He says, no, you're not. Yes, I am. So the shield of faith is the Word of God. You go to the Word, and you're taking the promise of the Word, and I'm going to stand there with the Word. And every time you come and do something to contradict my deliverance, I'm going to say, I'm still delivered. Huh. You know, and he's going to I'm still delivered. So that's an illustration of what that looks like. And it's all something that takes place in your mind and in your soul. So what I want to deal with, because what happens is, we, 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 we understand grace, but we have this attitude of, well, thank God for His grace, so I'm just not going to do nothing. And that's not what it means. It means you're standing in the victory of what Jesus has obtained. And while you're standing, He, has, he will assist you with something called faith in the middle of the attack. Faith is not the magic wand to try to get you your stuff while you're here. Faith is your security in the midst of the attack while you're standing on what you believe. So this is going to be a radical teaching on faith grace. I talked that this past week on, you know, on doing in the grace game, faith grace. And we're going to look at what this is all about. So, a lot of people think, and I don't know why this is, but there are, there's this thing about, they kind of, you know, spirit of division come in Edward. Somebody starts teaching grace, and then somebody has faith, and now they're opposing one another. Grace and faith should not oppose one another. They go together like a hand in glove. You see, there are two groups. There's the group that says that those who emphasize grace, which is God's part. Understand something about grace. Grace is God's part. It's not my part. 
I ain't got nothing to do with grace. I, it's all God. That's God's part. But then there are those who emphasize faith. That's our part. Faith is my part. Grace is God's part. But they go together. Grace is God's part. Faith is my part. Now, we got to get this faith thing right because we, we're using it like it's a magic wand. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to use my faith to rob that bank. Well, grace didn't make that available for your faith to rob. Well, you know, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to use my faith to believe that Taffy died so I can get her husband. Uh, grace didn't make me available to you. Y'all laughing. People do that. I'm going to use my faith to get somebody's husband. Well, grace had made somebody's husband available for your faith to take. And we do wild, weird stuff with faith because it leaped over its boundary. It leaped out of its context. And we're not using it contextually what, where it was designed to use. So we start in Romans chapter 5. Is everybody on the bus? Everybody on the bus? I, I know I kind of went there for a moment. Everybody on the bus, all right? All right. All right, watch verse 2. By whom also we have access. Access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Look at here. We have access into this grace. See, grace has already made everything available, and that's where we're standing. We're standing in this grace. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God or the manifestation of the glory of God. But notice, notice how we gain access to grace. Grace is this unmerited, uh, abounding provision in the unrestricted operation of God's love that comes through Jesus Christ to those who accept him, especially for those who depend on him. The grace of God is unmerited, but it is also increasing provision. But it is also love that can't be restricted by our crazy. It comes through Jesus Christ because grace is not just a subject. It is a person, Jesus, who is full of grace and truth. And it will especially be available for those who lean and rely and depend on Jesus Christ. And he says... None of that can be accessed without faith. So now all of a sudden, we need to understand how to live by faith so we can access this grace. Everybody follow me? All right, now, go to, look at Romans 4.16. Live by faith so we can access grace. Romans 4.16. He says, therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. Ah, uh, they go together. They're designed to go together. They each have their, 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 their function, and they work together. And without it, without grace, faith don't have nothing to access. Yeah, but without faith, you can't access all that grace is made available. So you got to have both. There's no opposition or no fight should be going on between the grace people and the faith people. We ought to be grace faith people. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace, and to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Now move over to the book of uh, Hebrews, chapter 2. I mean, uh, chapter 4, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4 and, uh, and verse 2. Well, now let's go to Ephesians 2, 8. This would be a perfect time to show this. I'll, I'll look at it again, but Ephesians 2 and 8. Now, notice about your salvation. For by grace are you saved. So, you're saved by what? What provided your, 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 your salvation? Take away grace, can you be saved? So, you're saved by grace. All right, but how do you, act, how do you uh, uh, get a hold of it? How do you take it? Through what? So, you got what grace made available, but you got it through faith. If you don't have faith, you can't get what grace made available because whatever grace is made available, you take it through faith. And that means through faith, man. I believe that I am saved because grace made 
salvation available to me, and I take it by faith, and I'm not looking at my hands and see if my hands look new. I'm not looking at my feet and see if they do too. No, I am saved by grace, and I now have it by my faith. I, I didn't do nothing different. I didn't sound different. In fact, probably when I left the church, I emptied the trash and cussed when I dropped a bottle on my feet. I am, see, the thing that separated me from God was not my sin action. It was the sin nature that separated me from God. But when I got born again, I had no longer the sin nature, and now I am right there with God. Hallelujah. And he can do things with my sin action because I'm no longer separated him because of this, this, this sinful nature. Whew. Right? Right? Are y'all following? We're going on a journey today. You're going on a journey today. Something getting ready to happen, and you are not going to be the last in line to find out that you already got your victory. I'm not, you're not going to walk away. You ain't walking out here today. Oh, praise the Lord. It's Memorial Day. One day I'm going to get my victory. No, you got your victory. You got your victory right now. Now, whether you want to take it home, which is based on your faith, You got to walk around believing this. Oh, uh, now, go to, um, I just said, home, Hebrews 4, 2. They were trying to enter into the rest, and, and they heard the word. They heard the word. For unto us was the gospel preached. We underline that word. We need, to find, we, need to, we need to understand what the gospel is. Someone says it's good news. All right, let's keep going. Good news about what? Because somebody says, well, the Bible, the whole Bible good news. No, there's some bad news in the Bible, too. <laughs> so we need some precision this morning about what the gospel is so that we can determine if it's really being preached. Because the coming of Jesus Christ is going to be based on the gospel being preached in all the world, and the end will come. And if we assume that the gospel is this one thing, just good news, and we're not precise about what good news, then we'll be deceived thinking the gospel being preached around the world, and it is not being preached around the world if you don't know what the gospel is. All right, so watch him. He says, unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not, and then we got to deal with that word. What word? The word preached. What word? What, what, what was the specific word that was preached? What is the specific gospel, precisely the specific gospel? He said, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. There was no profit from the word that they heard preached. Why? It wasn't mixed with faith. It requires faith to appropriate what grace has made available. If you understand that, say amen. amen. Now, here, here's where I'm going to attack all of our tradition. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Uh -oh. Romans 10, 17. Very familiar scripture. Ready? So then, if we're going to have to have faith to access grace, so then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It would be cool if we all understood when somebody said the Word of God, but we, we've got all this stuff out here, so precisely what specific word that you hear for faith to come? Because I can preach the word all over the 66 books. So precisely, what specific word do you hear for faith to come? Well, let's look at it in the NLT. Let's just travel to different versions here just for a moment. In the NLT. So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. So hearing the good news about Christ Faith for that comes. All right, let's keep going. Let's look at this in the NIV. Somebody says, you're getting particular. You know, in these days and times, you have to. 
because I can be preaching this right now and somebody will still be stuck on quoting what they know traditionally and not hearing what I'm saying. Yes, sir. All right, now watch this. He said, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, <laughs> and the message is heard through the word about Christ. So he is saying that faith cometh by hearing the gospel, or the good news, right? The gospel, what kind of gospel? About Christ. Oh, my goodness. Faith comes from hearing the gospel of Christ. Well, what grace got to do with that? Well, going over here to, uh, what is it? I think it's um, Gal uh, Galatians chapter 1 and 6. Galatians 1 and 6. Now, let's, let's take on what you heard so far. I'm taking you on a little journey. Galatians 1 and 6. Paul is talking here. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. Watch the assumption here, unto another gospel. He is, he is saying here, I am, I, am, I am tripping out that someone has, that, that, that from him that called you into the gospel of the grace of Christ to another gospel. And now notice what he says in verse 7. He, he's got that colon in there. Notice what he says in verse 7. Verse 7, come on, guys, quick. Which is not another gospel. I, I'm surprised that you left the grace of Christ to another gospel, and then he says, there is no other gospel. God. Right? There is no other gospel. And I literally have heard people tell me, well, there are other gospels. There is no other. There is no other. Ain't no more good news <laughs> like this good news about Jesus. All right, now watch this. He says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ, which he in the previous verse referred to the grace of Christ. So if it's the grace of Christ and the gospel of Christ, then the good news is the good news about the grace of Christ. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing the almost too good to be true news about the grace that Jesus Christ has brought before us. You follow me? All right. So the gospel of Christ is precisely the good news about grace. Go to Acts 20 and 24. I, um, you know, I don't make speeches. I, I've been called to teach. And like, why are we doing this? Because our Christianity was supposed to be based on the Word. And I can't figure out how we're going to be successful Christians if we don't master this book. Amen. What we do as some Christians is we take the Bible and we make up stuff. And we just read Scripture, all our context, and we make up stuff. And then we try to live by it. And, and, and decades go by, and everybody's repeating the, 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 the makeup stuff. And then you're reading the Bible, it ain't even in there. Like I, I thought, you know, I was looking for the scripture that, uh, uh, you know, that we should have Jesus rather than silver and gold. And I realized that was actually a song. <laughs> How many of you have done the same thing, went looking for scripture and you could never find it? Because it wasn't never there. Somebody was. You, you got the makeup stuff. All right, look what he says here. Very interesting. But none of these things move me. Neither count out myself, my life dear unto to myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. Paul said, here's the ministry that Jesus on the road to Damascus. You remember that whole deal? Knocked him off his horse. He went blind. Jesus said, Paul, Paul, why persecutest me? And Jesus and he said, why, when I persecute you, he said, when you persecuted them, you persecuted me. And, and, and th that wasn't the end of the story. The dialogue was so big. It was too big to put in books. But he, but he, he says here, 
that Jesus called him to testify the gospel, and with this prepositional phrase, he's going to be precise about what gospel of the grace of God. To testify about the good news of the grace of God. I don't know, I don't even know how to begin to try to, it is the only gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we call in, uh, well, you know, you have the, you have, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are gospels too. No, 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 no. I, I, I won't argue with you over that because Jesus was there. So they testifying about what Jesus was doing on the earth. Mm. But he gave Paul the precision of that testimony of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John got it too. Glory to God. And he says, I want you to testify about the gospel of the grace of God. I can't help but wonder why are so many people against the grace of God, which Galatians in 4 says that still today there are people who are enemies to the grace of God, and yet they say that they're preaching the gospel. When I just showed you with precision that the gospel is the grace of God. And faith comes by hearing the gospel of the grace of God. Because you're going to need faith to access this gospel. You can't get this gospel and all that grace is made available without faith. And if you don't hear about the grace of God, then you don't have faith for the grace of God. And what we have faith for now is the law. We have faith that if we can just do this enough and do that enough and do that long enough and perform long enough, our faith is in our performance. And our faith is not supposed to be in our performance because your performance is not good enough to do what his grace has already done. He says, hear the gospel of grace and faith for all that grace has made available will come. Faith that you're the righteousness of God. Faith that you have been redeemed. Faith that you have wisdom to know what to do when you don't know what to do. Faith that all of your needs are met. And faith for everything that grace has made. Faith that you are forgiven so the devil can't mess with your soul no more because you've been hearing the gospel of grace and faith has come to access this grace. Your tradition has made the word of God, which is the word of grace, of no effect. And the struggle that people have. Well, I tell you what, you've been on them drugs, been on them drugs for five years, you're going to go to hell. So why should a person, they don't have no hope. Why should I come to church? Why should I do anything? You're telling me I'm doomed. I'm trying to defeat this. And don't let them die in drug addiction. Oh, they went to hell. You have more faith in the condemnation of the law. You have developed faith for sending people to hell. More than you have the faith of this amazing grace that Jesus has sent you. Jesus. All right. Everybody on the bus? Yeah, this thing finna get heavy. Well, Pastor, it's pretty heavy right now. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. You, you believe. You believe this grace. You believe that when I fall, I shall arise. But some people have more faith that I have fallen. Uh-oh. God don't like me no more. I've lost all the favor. He withdrawn himself from me, touched not the unclean. 
uh-oh, I, I got to confess all day that I'm forgiven. You, you, you have developed faith for the law. Here's the big question. What part is God's responsibility? We know that. Grace. What part is my responsibility? We know that. Faith. What must I do? That thing keeps coming up. What must I do? What must I do? You have developed faith for what must I do? The question was asked, who was that? The dude that I got out of jail when the earthquake? And he said, what must I do to be saved? Even also the rich young ruler, what must I do to be saved? In both cases, believe. But we have no faith in if I believe the gospel. Wow. Wow. So one group teaches everything is totally up to God. Now let's, let's, let's get it balanced now. So some people heard grace and they say, well, everything's totally up to God. I don't need to resist. I don't need to develop my faith. I don't need to hear about the gospel of grace because under grace is all totally up to God. So if I want to go and commit an adultery, I'm under grace. Oh, if I want to go and steal something, I'm under grace. No, you're not under the grace of Jesus Christ. You might be on some, on some, some, some alcohol called grace, <laughs> some liquor called grace, grace to not knock you out when you drink it. it, it that's under grace, God teaches you to be godly. Under grace, he says, we start off with all this crazy in your life, but as you allow my grace or as you allow Jesus to teach you, because grace is a person, as you allow the grace of God to teach you, he's going to start changing your heart, and you're going to have this journey, and this journey you're going to have some ups and some downs, and then you're going to keep going, do pretty good, and then you can have some ups and some downs, and you're going to keep going, do pretty good, but God's working on your heart through the Holy Spirit, and then you pause and look back, and you're like, Whoa, you see a trail of stuff you used to do no more, but you ain't doing it no more because he is taking you into this holiness that you can't achieve by yourself. It, it's already been achieved by him, but he just needs you to believe in him. And on the way, not only is he changing your heart, but he's developing a relationship with him. You talking to him without having to have the, the prayer shawl on. You're talking to him sometimes without getting on your knees because it's a personal thing now. Now you're talking to him, and then you're now hearing him talk back to you. And so y'all having a relationship, and you talking to him about stuff, and then the next day he do it. And then you're talking about stuff, and then the next hour it happened. And you're like, wait a minute, this God is real. And you finally get to a place where can't nobody tell you that God's not real. Because you know it for yourself. Can't nobody tell me God's not real. You can't tell me he's not real. Because this Christian life should be a personal relationship intimately intertwined with God. Where you know him and you no longer get tempted to try to perform your religious gestures. You're no longer tempted to try to articulate your knowledge of Scripture. You know why? Because you have been set free and all you know is you know him. And you all right with knowing him. I don't need your approval. I don't need your validation. I am connected with a God who loves me intimately. And I tried, I tried to, I tried to move him away from me, but he's, 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 his love is unrestricted. It's, his love is no longer restrained. The crazier I got, the more loving he got. When I thought it was all over and I was drunk in a bar somewhere, and had no God on my side, God was on your side. You thought he left you because of the liquor. Honey, he showed up right when you finished the last bottle and say you might even be able to hear me a little better because you ain't got your mind right, but now I'm coming in. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to keep you. I don't care what you did. I don't care how far, how many times you, I'm not going to let you go. I made you a promise, and I promise you when you see me, you're going to be just like me. I'm not going to let you go. Hey, I'm not going to let you go. That is the faith that cometh. 
the faith that cometh that says he will never leave me nor forsake me. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. That's the faith that cometh. Somebody say, yeah. Hey, brother Doll, I got five principles I want you to hear. I want to hear your principles. I'm tired of your principles. I know Jesus. Do you know him? And I don't want to do that. I don't want to flex principles. Because you're trying to flex principles, so you're trying to deflect, trying to make me think you ain't got no issues. Everybody who needs Jesus need him for something. And for you to say that something's wrong with me because I'm still on a journey. Now, I done got rid of 20 things. I got 20 more to go, and you trying to stop my progress, judging me on the 20 things that God has already delivered me out of and telling me that if I keep having sin in my life, I'm going to go to hell. I'm telling you right now, hell situation was already dealt with when he came and saved me and took away that old man and said, now I'm going to walk with you. Oh, 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 well, listen, listen, I just saw this. I ain't never seen this before. I just saw this. Remember, I did both check out. You remember when Jesus was walking on the water? Oh, and, and Peter said, if it be you, if it be you, now you know Jesus ain't going to lie. He ain't going to sit up and say, it, it don't be me. <laughs> so he said, he said, if it be you, let me walk on the water. And Jesus said, come, because it be me. <laughs> now watch this. Get a bull shaka. So Jesus, so Peter started walking on the water. Got in there and started walking on the water. Yeah, I thought he'd think he was cool too. And then when the wind started blowing <laughs> and waves start moving, he began to sink. Now watch the picture of grace. Jesus catches him, pulls him up, and say, let's walk together. I'm telling you, when you have faith for this grace, you ain't got to worry about falling all the time, because even if you fall, he's right there. Good God Almighty. He's right there. He's right there. Even when you fall, you got a hand, a helping hand there. And that's all we ever needed was a helping hand. I know I'm not perfect, and I know you ain't perfect. But I know all of our imperfect selves have gotten born again so we can have that helping hand. Give me that helping hand. So if I fall, the helping hand just pick me up. If I got the helping hand, just pick me up. And after a while, now when will I not need this helping hand? He said, well, the day when I come back. I promise you that if I started the work in you, I'm going to finish the work in you. And when you see me, you're going to be just like me. You ain't going to need my helping hand no more, praise God. But right now, right now, you need my helping hand. You need my helping hand. And I don't know about y'all, but I need his helping hand. You can call me reverend, bishop, apostle, but I still need that helping hand because I tell you, bishops fall, apostles fall, reverends fall. But as long as they got their hands connected to the hand of the man that steals the water, that's a picture of this grace. That's a picture of this grace. And, and by you hearing this, faith is coming for this. Faith is coming for this. Not just another principle that we threw together from different scriptures in the Word, but faith for this grace. Faith for this Jesus cometh by hearing. 
and hearing the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah, excuse me. I told my wife, I said, I don't need, I don't need to be hollering. I just got my voice back. I don't need to be hollering. <laughs> but he's so, he's so real. He's like, he's like, he's so, he's so real. And you walk around here scared because somebody say, you know, they don't like you. They're going to do something bad to you. They're going to slander you. They're going to expose you. you. When you know Jesus, you're like, I don't give a, I don't care. <laughs> Give up. Give up. Give up. See, you see that helping hand? Help me, help me, help me. <laughs> you years ago, I went ahead, I'd finish that center. And see, that's the deception. Dudes in the pulpit think they're perfect, and they're putting pressure on people in the congregation. And then we preach shame. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. And it's like, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> see, you know about my shame. I just don't know about your own your shame. When that happens, we all come in complete dependence on the only one that can help us. I don't know about you, I don't do good around perfect people. Oh, there ain't none. <laughs> it's just those who believe the story they tell themselves. And, and that's what I'm saying when somebody says you're, you're going to hell for sin. The guy that preaches that has got to see himself as a person without sin, which means he's perfect. And then you have to do like Jesus did when they took that woman out of their act of adultery and put her down to say what the Bible, what the Bible says, the Scripture says, Moses said, stone her. And Jesus was under the law. He got to fulfill it perfectly. And Jesus knew that's exactly what the law said, stone her. Like, is Jesus actually going to tell him to stone the woman? He's so cool. Because they knew the law, but he wrote it. <laughs> like, boy, you got the wrong number. <laughs> you know what I'm about? Jesus said, okay. Yeah, it did say stone her. Go ahead, go ahead. But hold on now. Uh, those of you who have no sin, that's my boy, that's my boy, you understand? Know those of you, that's my boy, boy. That, and no disrespect, Lord, but you, you man, <laughs> I want to learn from you. Those of you who have no sin, go ahead and cast the first stone. And the Bible says the old people left first. But they got, they got a bunch of sin. They just like, I'll, I know all my stuff. The young people, you know, the frontal lobe hadn't closed yet, and they, they thought they had sins, but quickly remembered what they had just done. And Jesus said, uh, is anybody here to condemn you? He said, she said, no. She said, he said, neither do I condemn you. Go, watch this, because you understand this and be condemned no more. Go and sin no more. Stay close to my helping hand. I got you, baby. And Jesus is always showing up around people that the religious church said you shouldn't be around. And today there are people that need our help, but we feel embarrassed to be around them. Here's Jesus showing up, he's marching through whatever the street or something, and Zacchaeus, or short dude, Napoleon complex probably, he's in a tree just to get a look at Jesus. And Jesus looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, come down, I must go to your house. Now, read the Scripture carefully because the Bible says that all of the church folks that were around him got angry and upset because Jesus went to, to be with a sinner in his house. And watch this, because when Jesus is in your house, yeah. that thing will preach. 
Oh, somebody ought to let Jesus in your house. Yeah. See, a lot of things we're trying to do to change our house, and all you need to do is invite Jesus to come to your house. Because without saying one word about the crazy robbery and, 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 and deceit that this guy had played upon amongst people, he stood up while he was eating and said, okay, okay, I'll restore everybody fourfold, and I'll give, uh, you know, he give back some stuff. And let me tell you something. Jesus said, okay. See, when you're raising your kids, quit trying to beat them up with your fear-based parenting. <laughs> Just let Jesus in the house. Amen. Somebody said, what does that look like? Hear this so you can have faith and then apply faith with your children. Because at the end of the day, see, you think your children are doing just what you're saying that they're doing. They're doing it in front of you. And then when they get out like everybody else, they have de de devised a scheme to try to do what they want to do. And it really ain't going to mean nothing until they want to do it. That's what I'm saying. You can't be forcing people to tithe and forcing people to pray and forcing people to come to church. I ain't sitting up there and saying, Lord, make everybody get up and come to church. I'm saying, Lord, thank you that you're in their house because you can change them like nobody else can. So Jesus is always showing up. Then he shows up with this woman, changed his route to show up to meet a woman that could have absolutely canceled his ministry. She was unclean because she was a Samaritan. And at the time, there was a racist issue between the Samaritans and the Jews. Racism then. Some of that is even today. Yes. And the disciples had gone to get some supplies and came back, and Jesus is sitting there talking to this Samaritan woman who was unclean, and he said, give me water out of your cup. If he would have took that cup, he would have been seen as unclean. So the disciples are coming like, bruh, you getting ready to get canceled. <laughs> And you know what Jesus said? He said, look, man, uh, my meat, my nourishment is to do his will. I ain't got time to be concerned about what people are going to think about me because of who I've been hanging out. I am a friend to sinners, and I need you to be a friend to sinners. But when you have faith in the law, you're too concerned about what people say, and you want their approval so bad that you don't even allow somebody to hurt when you can help them because of how it makes you look. I'm, 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 over, I'm, I'm over all that stuff, dude. I'm done with all that. I'm done with all that. I don't need somebody's approval for me to go where God tell me to go. I go where God tell me to go. I don't need your approval. We mad at you, and we're going to do something to you, and we're going to slander you. Dude, you, what you're going to do already been done. I mean, it's, it's, it's 40 years of it. I mean, I'm conditioned for whatever slander you're going to come out with. I'm conditioned with it. I ain't going to fan the flame because all that's going to do is make it worse. A man who defends himself will always remain average. I'm done with all that. I don't care. Mm, most of the church problem, we care about the wrong things. Paul said it like this. He says, if I'm preaching this grace to be accepted by people, <laughs> he said, I can't be a servant to Jesus. You disqualify heaven's use of you if you value what people say about you more than serving God. I have friends that used to be friends of mine that used to come to this church and preach that dog me out all the time because of what I preach. And you know what Paul said? Paul said, are you going to be my enemy because I preach the truth? So be careful about talking about you want to be used by God because it costs you something. Amen. And I don't, know if you, I don't know if you're willing to pay the price. It costs you something. Anybody can get up here and just repeat what everybody else is preaching. All right, all right. And that's what they told me. Don't you preach something different than what everybody else is preaching. Don't, they're going to cast you away and call you a heretic. I mean, they can call me Batman if they want to. I don't care. <laughs> 
I'm going to preach the gospel. Somebody says, why are you preaching? Because it's, it's done something to me that I've been trying to do to myself. Good old bush. It's rearranged my furniture. I just, oh, God, I, I know him. I sense him. I feel him. I hear him. I, I, his love is, is overwhelming. His, his grace is so big. And, and oh, glory to God. I, 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 can't, I can't even fathom this mighty God, the creator of heaven and earth that takes the time to talk to me. And I think that's what's missing in the Christian life. You have the principle, you just don't have the person. Yeah, you, you know the definition, and you know the Greek and the Hebrew, but you don't know him. And when you learn, thank you, Lord. When you know him? Somebody asked me one time to say, I just got to say, what's the first thing I need to do? I said, get to know Jesus. Yeah, but they told me I need to read that book first. Forget about all that. Get to know Jesus. Well, how did I do that? Well, how did you get to know anybody? Spend time with him. Fellowship with him. Look at the scripture. Ask him about it. Lord, what that mean? I've literally done that. Lord, what does that mean? I did that with, with, with Romans 10, 17. I'm like, what does that mean? Because these, they're people that they're using their faith like, like something. To, you can, they're using it for faith. They're using their faith outside of the fenced grace. It's designed to access grace. It is not designed to access grace your personal, selfish desires. Amen. And that's what it turned into. It turned in using your faith to get your house, using your faith to get your car, using your faith to get your bag, your band. I learned this word yesterday, your band. I think that's like $1,000 wrapped up with a rubber band over it. <laughs> It's called something else, uh, a done, a dumb, dub, dub, what? You know it? What'd you say? Stack. <laughs> Bands. Yeah, all that. It was, just, it was just totally new to me. I mean, they were talking to me, I'm looking like, what? What's that? I said, why don't y'all just say $1,000? <laughs> it still work for me. We, we got to get to know Jesus, man. There's, there's a lot of stuff, and we're using our faith to get, to get stuff because we don't know if we get Jesus. He, he, it's like wet with the water. Jump in the water, get wet. Jump into Jesus. All of your needs are met according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. It's through Jesus. And you're having to invent principles because of your insecurities to draw people in to pay for your principles that you stole from the Word that won't work because you separated the principle from the person. Nah. I'm done with it. See what I want to say? <laughs> I was online this past week. Somebody said, bye, Creflo. I'm like, bye, ain't nobody asked you to stop by you. You here. <laughs> bye. Sadonara. Au revoir. <laughs> Arrivederci. <laughs> and I realized how I was hindering the flow of God because I kept trying to teach what was acceptable by the church world. And I had to get so free from people that I would be willing to risk having empty seats so God had COVID to come by so I can see what that tastes like. 
And I preached to empty seats for, what, about um, several months. Came out and said, well, praise the Lord, ain't nobody here. And sometimes when you're tired, you come out and you see a number of empty seats, you're like, you got to help me, Jesus. And I had to preach and get happy. And, and you know, Ken and Taffy being in the corner somewhere. <laughs> hey, keep that little clap, y'all. <laughs> That's making it worse. <laughs> You hear what I'm saying? And so, so we use this faith outside of the realm of grace. And we'll show up and hear about how do, how do, you, how do you become a millionaire in, in two weeks using the principles of God. So I'm having these new meetings called, you know, table meetings. And I'm calling pastors to sit at the table. 18 seats, 18 pastors. And they thought they were going to come to hear me share the principles of church growth. They thought I was going to share how is it that you can do this for 42, 43 years. You know what I started off with? I started off sharing my discomforting pain. Guys, I realized that it was a point in my life I had put so much in the closet that the closet door wasn't latching no more because there was too much in there. And there was a stress and depression that hit my spirit. And I was tired. And my soul was screaming out for rest. And so I went to get me a therapist to help me take this stuff out the closet. Because, you know, preachers don't believe in no therapist or medicine or nothing like that. But let your butt, butt hurt a little bit more. You, you're going to be looking for something. I don't, I don't take no pills. I got a headache. I don't take no pills. Give me the Tylenol. <laughs> all, all, that, all that weird stuff. And I started off with the sicknesses that attack my body because preachers ain't going to tell you when they get sick because you're supposed to be a man of faith. Yeah, right in the middle of that sickness, my faith is accessing the grace to help me get out of this. Yeah. Amen. And so people are fed up with phony. I am. I'm so tired of phony. I don't know what to do. It just, it just drains me. Phony. Hey, Pastor, how you doing? This is the day the Lord hath made. Do you say that when you no time come at night for your wife? Do you go in the bedroom talking about, this is the day the Lord hath made, sweetie? <laughs> or do you say, baby, let's get it on. Hey, man, let's do this thing. <laughs> come on, people tired of that. You, 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 you're not even real. They're, they're human beings that are listening to see if you can tell them something to help them through the journey of life, and you still up there spontificating about the the doctrine that you learn online from the hermeneutical studies of who gives up. <laughs> and you know what we've nourished? We've nourished fear, shame, and guilt. And the scariest man in our churches are preaching from the pulpits. Because they had to pastor put a, a cover over them. Because they were too afraid to show the real them and then lived in fear that somebody would find out that the identity that you got introduced to was a fake identity that was cultivated through the cover of shame. I'm afraid if I lose my church, how am I going to live? <laughs> you got a degree? You can do things. Do stuff. I ain't sitting around here having my church vote on something I want to buy. I got a freaking job. I got business. I know how to invest my money. I ain't sitting up. Let people say whatever they want to say. It ain't none of your business what I got and how I do what I do. But I tell you one thing, I ain't never going to be scared that the church going to close up. I start to close it up one time myself. <laughs> the 
the brokenness in the pulpit. The husband, the bishop, and the first lady looking like they got it all together and they just finished cussing each other out before they came to church. And you wonder why people can't grow in your church. Because they can't see the truth in you. Amen. Hmm. What's wrong with you? It's all good. It's all good, but it's only all good because of whose hands I got. He's my comforter. He's my shield. He's my protection. He's my world changer. He's my world changer. I ain't got no more time, and I ain't finished. I, I, I didn't get, Lord, if we ever going to finish this series. But I ask each of you, if you do nothing else today, see yourself in the hands of the man who steals the water and let him steal your life. Trust him. Faith cometh by hearing this good news of the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ so that in hearing it, you possess the faith to appropriate and to take what grace has made available. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you can hold your walking, please. So, Lord, there it is. It's like to be able to trust you to fill my mouth with your word. Thank you. But even more to be able to trust you to fill the ears of your precious people with your word. That I pray that faith has come that all that Jesus has made available will be obtained and that we can grab it, victory that Jesus got for us, that we now can hold on to it. You know every situation at the sound of my voice. And you know that if men and women would receive the faith to access what they need in the middle of their situations, that you will walk them through the fire. You will walk them through the discomfort. You will walk them through the trouble. I pray, Father, that all of these lives represent journeys and how awesome it is to know that you are with us all at the same time walking us through this journey called life. Lord, deliver us from ourselves. And may we come to trust and depend on you. Now, Lord, help us to take an opportunity in our giving. We've heard so many crazy things about our giving that people are in fear of having a cheerful heart to give. But I thank you that through your grace that we can give out of a heart that wants to, not out of necessity. We don't give out of necessity. We don't give like we're turning on some magic lamp. We give because we love you. We give to worship you. May our giving 
show us the advantage that we have over the world, that we have a God who is our supply house. Oh. Speak to our hearts on, on what you have us to worship you with. Speak to our hearts and deliver us from the fear of giving. For you gave your only begotten Son so that if we believe on him, we would not perish but have everlasting life. I thank you, Lord, that something has turned in this place this morning, something Something has happened on the inside of our souls and that we will never be the same again. Bless those who will trust you today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need an offering envelope, would you raise your hands and the ushers will will minister to you. It has come to my attention the attack of the devil in this life where giving is concerned. And I plan on in the very near future of doing something with it. As we give and as we plant and as we sow, all of that comes together to as we worship him in the beauty of his holiness. And as we worship him in the beauty of his holiness, we bring an offering and we give unto the Lord. Some people have so been fear conditioned in this area, their ears can't even hear the giving aspect. It is more for you who give than for anything else and God is going to big time show himself strong in those who know how to worship him in their giving it's a huge part of our lives you can't take everything else I preached this morning and then it gets to this point oh yeah there you go there you go there you go there you go to money there's a spirit of mammon that will get on you and ruin your whole life because Lives that are being messed with right now are being messed with because of the spirit of mammon. The mammon spirit is, is the motivation spirit in the life of a lot of people. Moved by a spirit, a demonic spirit that says, you don't need God, you need money. You don't trust God, trust money. And, you can't, and, and some can't even hear it. They can't even hear it. They can't even see it. That's why this is labeled as our worship. I won't see it again as passing the bucket and bucket plunking. This is bigger than that. And you'll see even more so in the scriptures. Hold your offerings up. Father, we worship you with what we give out of our heart. We worship you with what we sow into the kingdom of God. And Father, we thank you that everything you said about this, Jesus, we need you also in the physical, natural areas of our lives, and we trust you and worship you with our gifts. Thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just go ahead and receive uh, this worship gift. And as you sow, I want you to think about the decisions you, you need to make or the decisions really you want to make. I hope this was a sermon that didn't condemn, but a sermon that said, you know what, I, I really want to know this Jesus. I want to know this God. I want to have faith in this Jesus. I want to have faith in his word, his word of grace, his word of unmerited favor and unrestricted love. And for some reason, maybe you have fallen away from that relationship or maybe for some reason that you're just not engaged in that relationship, I want you to re-engage this morning. And remember what I said, you're not doing things to get people's approval. 
You're doing this because you believe in this God. You believe in this grace. You believe in this Jesus full of grace and truth. And you make your mind up, Lord, I want to I serve you, and I'm willing to give up whatever I need to give up that I might be in your service. All of these decisions are on you. And I believe you're going to make some good decisions today. I believe, this, I believe you're finally going to get yourself out of your way and allow God to begin an amazing journey in your life. So if you're here today and you've never been born again, you've never made him your Lord and your personal Savior, oh, what an amazing day it will be for you. If that's what you want, that's what you believe, come join me at this altar. Get out your seat, get your personal belongings, come on down here, let's do it. Secondly, if you're here and you want to recommit yourself to the Lord, you want to re-engage that relationship that you knew you walked in at one time, that's up to you. You come and do what you need to do. Thirdly, if you want the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, then we'll show you how. You just got a, got a desire to want it yourself. And last, but certainly not least, if you believe that God's called you to join this church today, he said to Elijah, he said, go to a certain brook and there will I sustain thee. You know, somebody say, well, church is church. No, it's not. There's, there are certain brooks where God has intended and meant for you to be connected to those brooks and there you'll be nourished and sustained. If you believe that this is that certain brook, would you please come at this time and be a part of what God is doing here at World Changers. Mm-hmm. Jesus, 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 there is something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus. Life of fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim that 
that kings and kingdoms they'll all pass away and there's nothing something about that name y'all better praise him up in here just a little bit Somebody touch me. Oh, 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 oh. Somebody touch me. Oh, 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 oh. Somebody touch me. And it must have been the hand of the Lord. You don't know nothing about that one. <laughs> You don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Father, we thank you for those who come. We pray in the name of Jesus that your power and your anointing will be upon them. And that you will cause them to walk in the path that you've wired them to walk in. And we thank you they'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, if you'll turn and follow these gentlemen to the prayer room, they're going to take you and minister to you and give you a biblical understanding of how to came and, and uh, maintain what you came to receive. Congregation, you can stand for the final blessing. Thank you all so much for coming out to church. And you guys are amazing. Taff and I love you. We appreciate you. We thank God that we get to Pastor World Changes Church International. It is an honor. And now unto the spirit of grace, the power of God to dwell with you all this week, the power of God to open doors that others said could not be opened, the power of God to watch over you lest you dash your foot against the stone. May the grace of God be upon you. And every mountain, I shout grace, grace to those mountains. That the peace of God will surround you all week long. That you walk in the favor of God, the love of God. And that the power of his grace will escort you down the path of your life and bring you to days of heaven on the earth. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And everybody said, amen. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Amen. 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 All right, now, world changers. Listen. Listen, with a word like that, there ain't nothing else to say but drop the mic. Because, listen, God is, ah. Um, oh, too good. This is too good. Too good. Too good. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know about y'all. We were slapping each other, pushing each other. or well, not slapping. Pushing <laughs> each other. Just, like, yeah. just the revelation and the confirmation of so many different things. Man, God is so good. So, Ayana, what, what's something that you got out of service today? Listen, for me, to sum it all up, you cannot do this life without him. Like, we talk about having a relationship with God all the time, and mm -hmm. I just pray that you guys receive that for real. Like, you can't do anything in this life without God. You can't walk, you can't talk, you can't move, you can't nope. breathe, you can't think without Him. So whatever you got to do, get in that Word, get that relationship with Him, cultivate it with Him. The same way we have a relationship with our friends, mm -hmm. our family members, all those things, we spend time with each other. Yeah. It's, it's the same way you spend time with God. You get to know Him. You commune with him you talk to him you allow him to talk back to you mm -hmm. get in your word and get that relationship and get him. that relationship the relationship is everything 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 man listen so we know we got so much out of uh, today's message and we again we know that you did too so this is what we want you to do share this message with yes. someone that you love share with a, a friend a neighbor your family y'all come together have a a, a a bible study time I almost said movie night but have a church <laughs> night um but everybody come together man get this word in you and continue to 
don't let that let it continue to just go over and over in your mind, man, because it's all about changing your mindset. It's about renewing your mind. You don't renew it to nothing. Mm -hmm. All right. So get this word in you, man. Amazing, amazing, amazing message. Amazing message. Shout out to God. Yes. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we do extend this opportunity. If you did not get an opportunity to give just a moment ago, as Dollar Dollar did provide, um, if you did not get an opportunity, we want to make sure you have that. Mm -hmm. So right now we have a few different ways that you can participate, that you can complete your giving. Um, and we want to just share those uh, those ways with you really quickly. One, you can text the word World Changers. Leave a space and then your amount and text that to 74483. Mm -hmm. You can call in your gifts to 1-866-477-7683. You can mail it in to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349. Or, of course, online by going to worldchangers.org, creflodollarministries.org, or simply scanning the QR code that's on the screen. All right? Man, it's a, the fact that we get to give mm -hmm. is not an obligation. It's something that we get to do, man. God is too good. He's the one that gave it to us in the first place, it's and then we get to give. Listen, all about better, his goodness. You better preach. <laughs> so, listen, we have a few, just a couple announcements, and we'll let you guys out for today. Um, but we want to share this with you so that way you're in the know with yep. everything that's going on here at World Changers. And that first up, First up, now, ladies, we know all month we, y'all, man, listen, from Stone Mountain to Mother's Day to Lemon Bliss, and yep. y'all just been doing it. Well, listen, okay? All right, fellas? It's June is coming up. <laughs> Father's Day weekend is coming up. All right? <laughs> so Father's Day weekend is coming up. We want to make sure that you are in the building on Father's Day, which will be June the 16th. Mm -hmm. But the day before, we have a father-son brunch that is happening. It's our annual father-son brunch. Yes. I think it may be sold out by now um, because the men are showing up. <laughs> but either way. Want listen. to make sure that you know. So, let's if you, do them tickets up quick. Listen, I got, I got mine. So, <laughs> <laughs> make sure that you are, um, if you're not able to get to Father Son Brunch, of course, Father's Day service the very next day. We're going to be celebrating dads. It's just an amazing time to honor the men um, that we have in our lives, honor the, the, the wisdom that they give and mm -hmm. everything that they share with us. So, listen, um, be in the building June 16th, Father's Day Sunday. It's going to be amazing. Yes. All right? So, fellas, come through. All right. <laughs> Come through. So we, we got one more. What else we got? <laughs> one more thing. Grace Life 2024. Mm. We are so excited. The reunion is almost here. Grace Life. World Changers, get your tickets now by texting Grace Life to 51555 or visiting worldchangers.org. That's right. Mark your calendars July 11th through the 13th. You need to be here. Get your plane tickets, get your caravans, uh -huh. get your, your, your tour buses, whatever you need to do. <laughs> July 11th through the 13th. Be here. World Dome in the international city the of international College Park, city. Georgia. <laughs> we have so many things going on. We have the youth conference. We have the children's conference. We got things for the men, the women, and ministers and leaders all in one power-packed weekend. So we want to see you there. Yeah. Don't miss Pastor Dollar, That's Pastor right. Taffy, That's right. Michael Smith, That's right. Clarence McClendon, uh -huh. Inky Johnson, Greg Dickow, Andrea Creighton, Hezekiah Walker, okay. Doe, okay. and Brian Courtney Wilson, and Listen. so much more. So much Remember, more. July 11th through the 13th right here in College Park, That's Georgia. Right. We right. want to see you seated right here in the Dome. All right, y'all? Yeah. Grace Life. 2024. And listen, we want to make sure, and I want to repeat this one piece as well um, for your teens. Now, yes. if you signing up, sign up them babies. Sign, sign up, up your them teens. Teenagers, Don't, leave the them Don't leave them home. Don't leave them home. Don't leave them home. Listen, this is a celebration of grace for the entire and family. And we advise you to do it really quick, because especially children. Especially listen, children. Listen, them it's, tickets are going quick. And don't come and up here. And the teens, too. You come up here like, man, I tried to get them in, but they were sold out. Listen, <laughs> yeah. we're telling you now. Sign register your, kids your teens. Up. Register your children. Children, it is grace for the entire family. Entire family. Don't miss it. Last year, over 12,000. Yeah. This year, bigger and better. Yes. In the name. In the name. In the name. Well, listen, World Changers, we thoroughly enjoyed you all today. We pray that you all, of course, we I'm not going to. We know you received from today. Listen. All right? Because God. And if you didn't, you need to go back and listen again and again and again. All that, right? That means, like, <laughs> that means your wood was wet. Because listen, <laughs> over we and on over fire. and over. Over and over. <laughs> listen. So, <laughs> 
Make sure that you are getting this word and you share it with your friends. We want you to have an amazing Sunday. Be blessed this week. Know that everything you touch works because there's no failure in you. But at the same time, the fact that grace has already made it available, your faith is what takes it. So listen, take it to another level this week. Enjoy it. Be blessed and smile at somebody because you get to. Yes. In the name. Happy Sunday, World Changers. We love y'all. Hey, everybody, I want to give you a personal invitation to attend the Grace Life Conference, the reunion, July the 11th through the 13th. It's a reunion. It's a gathering of believers, and it's freedom. When people understand grace, they are empowered to change. So don't miss this opportunity. I'll see you at Grace Life 2024, July the 11th through the 13th. I'll see you there.